Having said that, let's further continue our discussion on the DCDA process. The next topic is the characteristic of the catalyst. So, we are using vanadium pentoxide as a catalyst in order to produce sulfuric acid by means of DCDA process. There are certain characteristics that need to be fulfilled by the catalyst. The first one is the active agent. So, vanadium pentoxide is but obvious our active agent to carry out this exothermic reaction of DCDA process. So, vanadium pentoxide is the active agent and it produces when vanadium metal is heated with excess of oxygen. So, this vanadium pentoxide is being prepared with the oxidation of vanadium metal in presence of excess of oxygen. The second characteristic is the shape of the catalyst. The, they are produced in a hollow cylindrical shape to reduce the pressure drop and increase the surface area. So, in order to have a larger surface area, we have selected spherical type of the shape or specifically cylinder type of the shape so that we can have higher surface area. And we can also reduce pressure drop in the reactor or we can or we can say double stage reactor. Then the next characteristic of the catalyst is that the promoter. In general, Alkali and metallic compounds added in a small amount to enhance the activity of the catalyst. So these are the substances which are used to enhance the ability of the catalyst is known as the promoters. And generally, this alkali and metallic compounds are used to solve this purpose. Then the next thing is the carrier. So basically carrier having a large surface area and resistance to process gas at the high temperature are used. So there are different type of the carrier that are used for the vanadium pentoxide. In a fixed bed, it is used as the pellet. From and fluidized bed, it is used as the powder form. So when we are using fixed bed, we are using pellets. And in the case of fluidized bed, we are using powder form of this catalyst. Generally, this carrier are your alumina, silica gel and zeolites. So, this was all about the characteristic of the vanadium pentoxide. Now, let's just quickly see the comparison between the catalyst, that is your platinum and vanadium pentoxide. You can see here on the screen that this vanadium pentoxide catalyst gives higher conversion efficiency, while the platinum catalyst gives lower conversion compared to this vanadium pentoxide. So, it is very much beneficial to use this vanadium pentoxide. Then vanadium pentoxide has relatively more life at the higher efficiency, while the platinum catalyst has lower life and its efficiency is also less. Now the next advantage of the vanadium pentoxide is this vanadium pentoxide is, is poison free, while this platinum catalyst is being poisoned by, by the arsenic present in the gases. Vanadium pentoxide catalyst can also handle low concentration of the SO2 gas. But with the case of platinum, we require higher concentration or we can say rich SO3 gas is required. And on the another side, this platinum is very expensive while vanadium pentoxide is relatively cheap. So this was the all comparison points for the vanadium pentoxide and platinum. Now let's just discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of this vanadium pentoxide. As you can see on the screen that this vanadium pentoxide is relatively immune to the poison. So it will not affect it by any external material or any or we can say that it is immune to any external poisons. Then this vanadium pentoxide is low initial investment and only 5% replacement per year. So we have to replace only 5% of the vanadium pentoxide per year. So we can say that their initial cost is relatively less. Require only 10 kg of the catalyst mass contain 7 to 8 percentage of the vanadium pentoxide per 100 percentage of the H2SO4. So required quantity of the vanadium pentoxide is relatively very less. We can say only 10 percentage of vanadium pentoxide is required. So this was the advantages of vanadium pentoxide. Now let's just discuss the disadvantage of vanadium pentoxide as you can see on the screen. 
it must be diluted SO2 into. So we cannot use higher concentration of the SO2 gas. We have to use dilute SO2 gas up to 7 to 10 percent. As this catalyst is very less active and require higher oxygen to SO2 ratio for the economical conversion. So we have to maintain dilute amount of the SO2 gas. Now. Now let us quickly move to the major engineering problem associated with this DCDA process. As you can see on the screen that the first major engineering problem is that design of multi-stage catalytic reactor. So it is not that much easy to design two-stage catalytic reactor. You can see that for larger production capacity some plant may contain more than conventional two stages. But the design of such multi-stage converter with internal cooling is rather very difficult. So not only that we have to design a single reactor inside which we have to integrate two different stages at two different temperatures. So in order to do this we have to provide internal cooling which is again very complicated. So all in all we can say that design of multi-stage catalytic converter or reactor is very difficult. Then the next thing is the space velocity. High gas velocity can be useful but it increases the pumping cost and hence optimum space velocity should be selected to balance the pumping cost and fix charges. So with the high velocity we can obviously achieve higher conversion. But to achieve this high velocity of SO2 gas we have to supply external energy to pump this gas which ultimately increases its capital cost. So in order to balance all the capital cost and operating cost we have to choose optimum space velocity which again very difficult job. Then the next engineering problem is the corrosion. As we all know that SO3 gas is highly corrosive gas. Is highly corrosive gas. So this SO3 and H2O are being very corrosive hence it is essentially to select proper material of the construction which is again cost implemented. Generally cast iron or brick line walls are being used for converting this reactor. Then last is the removal of heat. Generally nowadays to remove our heat cast iron pipes with internal fins are being used to increase their heat transfer. So this was the all of the major engineering problem associated with the DCDA process and it concludes the product of sulfuric acid.